want to invite all the young kids in the room today to come forward and sit with me down here. We're going to have a little talk about the Bible readings we heard. Y'all want to come over? You can sit on the cushions if you like, or you can sit here on the carpet, whatever you're comfortable with. Good morning. It's good to see you. Good morning. Lexi, you want to come and sit over here with me? You can sit on a step if you want. Good morning. It's so good to have you here in church. Have you liked the rain you've had this weekend? So-so? Nobody has the rubber boots and wants to go splash in the puddles? You did that? Yes, Rosie, I'm so glad you're here. Did anybody go out and splash in the puddles this weekend? Okay, I got one taker. I got caught in the rain last night as I was trying to get some errands done. Well, I'm curious. What do you think the rain is doing for us? We haven't had it in a while. Not like this. Just back-to-back days. Is it a good thing that it's raining? Because what? We're in a drought? Yes. That's right, Rosie. Tell me your name. Alex. It waters the plants. That's right. And, gives us food to grow. and gives us food to grow. That's right. Does anybody know what the largest crop is that we grow here in California? Any of you little ones here? Anybody have a guess? What do you think we grow the most of? Alex? What do you like to eat? Apricots. We do grow apricots here. That's a good guess. That's not the largest crop. Yes, you had your hand up. Tell me your name. Leo, what do you think the biggest crop is? Carrots? Well, I like carrots. They're good for our eyes, but it's not the biggest crop in California. Yes. Corn? Another good guess. But no, we grow that in the Midwest more. Yes. Lexi, wheat? Not, not wheat. Yes. No, bananas grow in a little bit more hot and humid place. Is that, is that Barr? I see you raising your hand, Barr. What do you think we grow? <laughs> Can somebody amplify that voice? Yes, yes, your sister is growing, but she's, she's, no. Almonds, Barr got it. Stand up, Barr. I want you to celebrate you. Good job. Very well done. That's exactly right. That is the biggest crop in California, almonds. Does anybody here like almonds? Yeah, I see some hands. Good job. All right. Wait, maybe you can be the microphone runner. I'm, I'm not probably the great with that. But that's awesome. You want to come up here? Tell me, where did you learn about almonds? At Grandma's house? At Grandma's house. Your grandma is a wise woman. Well done. Well, and we've been praying for her, right? I hope she's feeling better. Well, almonds are the biggest crop, and I, I like almonds. I know sometimes we can't always eat them real early because, you know, nut allergies are a thing, but how many of you have had almonds? Some of you? Okay, okay. Do you like how they crunch? You don't like them? That's okay. Anna has an allergy, yeah. So we got to be careful about that. Well, do you know that the almonds right now are really digging this rain? Do you know why? Right now the ground is soaking up. How many of you have big puddles in your yard at home? Is the ground kind of done soaking up water? It's had enough? I had a big, big, look like a swimming pool starting to go in one corner by one of my trees. I think the tree is done drinking. But right now, the almond trees, the ground all around the almond trees are soaking up all this rain because it's going to be needed when it comes time for mid-February, when those almonds start to bring out their flowers and they start to burst into bloom. And that's part of making that fruit. The seed that we eat, that's the fruit of the almond tree. Well, yes, yes. It's the part of the blossom that then turns into the part that we eat. So I was speaking in a metaphorical sense. But yes, you're very right, Rosie. So 
Did you guys hear today when Joan read for us the, the piece of scripture that talked about the farmer? What, what is the farmer doing right now, do you think? Yes, Rosie? Well, I think they can take the weekend off because the God's taking care of that watering of the crops, but you're right. A lot of times in California, the biggest job that the farmers have are to irrigate and to water the crops. Absolutely. Yes. Yes, I think they are very careful given. Ashton, right? Ashton's right. We have some prohibitions on water use in California. And the farmers, they kind of have a special set of rules that apply to how they can take care of growing all that food because they grow all the almonds for our whole country. All the almonds that get eaten in the United States come from California. So there are, there are rules about that. But so do the farmers, do you think they're having a party this weekend? Because they can kind of take off a little bit, take a break from all that watering? I think so. What did you do this weekend because of the rain? Did you stay home and stay cozy? Yeah. Neo, what did you do? Watched movies. Yes, Ashton. A Warriors game. Well, that sounds fun. Yes, Helen. Okay, you hung out with your friends. That's for a sleepover. That's the best. Yes, Rosie. A birthday party. Very good, very good. Well, some of you might have on a different day. Yes, Al. You have one more thing to say? Well, it's not on right now, but why don't you just tell me? Yeah. Excellent. Oh, okay. Well, that's kind of nice to do on the weekend. So there's a picture I want to show you, because some of you might have been painting this weekend. There's a person who made this painting a long, long time ago. What do you see when you look at this painting, y'all? Roots, OK. What else do you see? Anybody? Well, it might be. Yes, branches with flowers that are almond blossoms. That's right. Does anybody know who painted this picture? Yes, Rosie. Right, the branches are coming out from the, the larger part of the tree. It's just a part of the tree. Yeah, there's no trunk, so we, we don't actually know. We could go onto the website where this actually is living. We could find out. Who knows who... Who, who else in the room? Any of the adults in the room recognize this artist, this piece? Van Gogh. Van Gogh, exactly. And do you know Van Gogh painted this in winter when he was stuck in bad weather inside the house? Do you know why else he painted this picture of almond blossoms? He had a new member in his family, a baby nephew. Can you guess what that nephew's name was? No, not almond. <laughs> Vincent, it was his namesake. Van Gogh, the painter, was the godfather and uncle. Is there any uncle in the room? Do we have some uncles here? Okay, we got some people with nephews. Any of your nephews named after you? No, I don't see any takers. Well, I've never gotten such a cool thing from my godparents. I don't know about you all. But this picture was given to baby Vincent, and it hung over his bed so he could look up and see and think of his uncle who loved him very much. Now, this painting was coming at a time where Van Gogh was just beginning to experiment with new techniques. You can see how close up Rosie was noticing. There's not a whole tree here. You're just zoomed in, and there's these little pink splashes of color when you see the flower beginning to burst into bloom. Where else do we see pink today in church? Yes, Hannah? On the candle. That's right. It's the rose candle. The third Sunday in Advent, we always remember that God is bringing new life, even when we have to wait for it. The scripture that we heard from the prophet Isaiah had some, some descriptions that kind of reminded me of this painting. Yes, Ashton. I 
think that's a really good interpretation. I really like that, Ashton. I think for Van Gogh, he had a lot of struggles, actually. He had a hard time. He wanted to be this great artist, and he wasn't sure about himself. He didn't know if he could do what he hoped to do. And he also had some struggles, some inner struggles. He wrote a letter to his younger brother and talked about some of those. He said, you know, I know I could break my leg and it could heal and get better, but I didn't know I could break my brain and that that too could be getting better. Now Van Gogh had, had some back and forth with that struggle. His broken brain, the things that made him feel sad and sometimes have a really hard time, it was with him all his life and he wanted so much to see the possibilities. So I think you're right, Ashton. I think his nephew gave him hope. He saw the promise of new life and all the ways that God is coming among us and showing us new things. So it was, it was a source of rejoicing for him. Did you hear that word rejoice read when we read the Bible readings today? What does rejoice mean to you? Yes. Joy, but a thousand times bigger. I like that. Amplify the joy. Well done, Rosie. You're living up to your beautiful name. You're kind of engaging us with the pink. I like it. Anybody else have an idea of joy? What does rejoice mean to you? What do you do when you rejoice? Yes, Leo. Makes you happy? Yeah. Alex? Alex, did you want to share something? <laughs> okay. Ashton. Spending time with your family. Yeah, there's a lot of us who feel that joy. I have a nephew, and he's four years old, and whenever we're together, we just run around and jump around and laugh and laugh, and we have such a good time. And I think that you get to share that rejoicing with us, all these adults in this room. You see God's light and God's love in you, and it makes our hearts so happy. It gives us hope for what God is doing in the world. That's something that it's important for us to remember. You know, in winter, when Van Gogh was painting this, it was cold and yucky outside. He was in the part of France in the 19th century where it was really not, not uh, beautiful. It didn't look anything like this. And yet he could feel the hope of the promise of new life that was coming. That's something we think about in Advent because there are things in our life that are hard. There are things we have to wait for, ways that we don't feel joy, right? There are times that it's, struggle and it's hard. Yes, Rosie. You, re you party when you rejoice. That's right. And today we remember that when God comes, when God's love comes to save us, that party is going to be beautiful. It's going to be for everyone and it's going to be worth waiting for. Sometimes we wait our whole lives to experience that love, just like Van Gogh. And sometimes it can be hard but we still wait, and we do it, like you said, Ashton, with our family, and in the family of God, we help each other wait. I am so glad for the ways you help me wait for the good things that God is doing. And when you grow up, when your lives burst into bloom, whether we hold it this way or this way, and Rosie, you and I can confer on that after the, after the service, when it comes to God's joy, it will be so worth the wait. Can you hang on for that? All right. That's right. It's a few more weeks. We get to see almonds. You might be able to see these almond trees bursting into bloom. So I want to ask you to do something for me. The next time that you are caught in the rain, because I know it happens to all of us at some point, I want you to say a prayer and thank God for all that's being nourished by that water that we so, so need in California, the almonds and everything else. And I also want to ask you if you'll join me in praying for those who are struggling, who want to see the pink, like on Rosie's pants and like on our candle. They want that beauty and that joy in their lives, but they're having a hard time waiting. You can help share that love, and we can wait, knowing that God is going to take care of all of us, that we're all meant to flourish together. Amen? Amen. All right, you can go back to sit with your families now.